Greetings and welcome to our social network video stream viewers. I'm Joseph Clark and this is Martial Arts World Radio. Thank you for joining us. We're going to be getting our live radio broadcast underway in about nine and a half minutes, just after some news and weather. Over the next hour, we have the following four guest interviews. World champion, kickboxing pioneer and action film star, Benny the Jet Yokitas from an interview I recorded in Los Angeles while we grabbed some Chinese food just around the corner from his dojo together. Also, we'll be talking to UFC fighter Willie Gates. He'll talk to us about realizing his personal best as well as fight psychology. Bodyguard to the stars and consultant to military, prison guards and police forces, Master Chuck Platten. And Bellator fighter Ryan Couture, son of UFC legend and action star Randy Couture, as Ryan prepares for Bellator 180. That's this evening on Martial Arts World Radio. Welcome to our latest syndication affiliate, Radio Vibe, who has joined our affiliate network. Sunday, June 25th, UFC fighter Alex Ricci is hosting a Muay Thai seminar at Bruce County Combat in Walkerton, Ontario, Canada from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Everyone is welcome. No experience is necessary. It's $25 per person. Contact Bruce County Combat and Fitness in Walkerton for more information at 519-507-4431 or they can be emailed at brucecountycombat at gmail.com. This is Martial Arts World Radio. We're gonna be getting our broadcast underway in approximately eight minutes time. Our guest this evening, Benny the Jet Yurkidas, UFC fighter Willie Whoopass Gates, Master Chuck Platten, who is a bodyguard to celebrities and also a consultant on hand-to-hand -hand combat to the armed forces, the prison system, and to police forces, and Bellator fighter Ryan Couture, son of UFC legend and action star Randy Couture, as Ryan prepares for Bellator 180. Our interviews this evening are brought to you by BobWallWorldBlackBelt.com, the world's foremost online martial arts and MMA marketplace. Also, it's brought to you by Prospect Fighting Championships at www.prospectfights.com and the books The Tao of MMA and 21st Century Perspectives on Martial Arts. Both books are available at Amazon by searching them by their titles, The Tao of MMA and 21st Century Perspectives on Martial Arts. I'm Joseph Clark, this is Martial Arts World Radio. We're gonna be getting our broadcast underway in approximately seven minutes time for our live radio broadcast. Our guest this evening, Benny the Jet Yurkidas, UFC fighter, Willie Gates, Bellator fighter, Ryan Couture, and bodyguard to the star and consultant to the armed forces and police forces, Master Chuck Platten. Our interview this evening to, with Master Chuck Platten is brought to you by Kayani Independent Distributor Daniel Girage. Kayani is a leading provider of all natural health and wellness products that provide athletes with faster post-training recovery and energy. Endorsed by professional fighters and celebrity martial artists Josh Tyler, Manny Pacquiao, and Jackie Chan, reach out to Daniel for more info at KayaniHealthAustralia at gmail.com. That's spelled K-Y-A-N-I, KayaniHealthAustralia at gmail.com. Or Skype Daniel on Skype at that exact same address on Skype. His Skype address is KayaniHealthAustralia at gmail.com. Our interview with world kickboxing legend and martial arts film star Benny the Jet Yurkidas this evening is brought to you by ketone specialist Regan Bremersch. Keto OS is leading a modern health revolution through therapeutic ketone technology. Mix this great natural 100% bio-identical ketone powder into a 16-ounce bottle of cold water for a great tasting drink for peak performance. Within 15 to 30 minutes, you will be in the optimal training and fight state of ketosis. He doesn't just say it can do it, he can prove it. For more information, contact Regan at 1204-522-0733. You can also text him at that number, 1204-522-0733, or visit www.proveittoday.ca. That's www.pruvit2day.ca.
This is Martial Arts World Radio. I'm Joseph Clark. Thanks for joining us. We're going to be getting our radio broadcast underway in about four and a half minutes time for our live radio broadcast. Our guest this evening, the great Benny the Jet Yurkidas, UFC fighter Willie Gates, Bellator fighter Ryan Couture, and Master Chuck Platten, who is a bodyguard to celebrities and also a consultant to police forces, to the military, and to the prison guard system. Martial Arts World Radio connects with audiences through distinctive and compelling guests and content across radio, online, and mobile platforms. If you would like to add your station to our network, or if you would like to advertise on the show and sponsor our celebrity fighter interviews, reach out to me by email at producer at mawradio.com. Also, be sure to check out our website at www.mawradio.com and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube by following Martial Arts World Radio. I'm Joseph Clark. We're going to be getting our live radio broadcast underway in approximately three and a half minutes' time. Our guest this evening, Benny the Jet Yurkidas, UFC fighter Willie Gates, Bellator fighter Ryan Couture, and master Chuck Platten, celebrity to the stars and consultant to military, police forces, and prison system. Welcome to our latest syndication affiliate, Radio Vibe, who has joined our network. This week's inspirational quote is from Oscar Wilde and goes as follows. Be yourself. Everyone else is already taken. Irish playwright Oscar Wilde, 1854-1900. to 1900. This evening's interview with Bellator fighter Ryan Couture is brought to you by our web marketing affiliates Everlast, Century Martial Arts, MMA Warehouse, and UFC Store. Check them out at our website at www.mawradio.com and if you click on any of those icons that will take you to their online store, immediately you will qualify for a very aggressive discount and at the same time if you make any purchases you support this radio show and for that I would like to thank you. For those of you just joining us, I'm Joseph Clark. This is Martial Arts World Radio. We're going to be beginning our live radio broadcast in approximately two and a half minutes time after some news and weather. Thank you for joining us. Our guest this evening, world champion kickboxing pioneer and legend Benny the Jet Yurkidas from an interview that I recorded with him while in Los Angeles while we grabbed some Chinese food together around the corner from his dojo. Also, UFC fighter Willie Gates will be talking to us about realizing his personal best and fight psychology, and bodyguard to the stars and consultant to military, police forces, and the prison system, Master Chuck Platten. Lastly, we'll be speaking to Bellator fighter Ryan Couture, son of UFC legend and action star Randy Couture, as Ryan prepares for Bellator 180. This is Martial Arts World Radio. I'm Joseph Clark, and we're going to be kicking off our live radio broadcast in approximately one and a half minutes time. Thank you for joining us. Don't go away. Sunday, June 25th, UFC fighter Alex Ricci is hosting a Muay Thai seminar at Bruce County Combat in Walkerton, Ontario, Canada from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Everyone is welcome. No experience is necessary. $25 per person. Contact Bruce County Combat and Fitness for more details at 519-507-4431 or you can email them at brucecountycombat at gmail.com. This is Martial Arts World Radio. I'm Joseph Clark. We're going to be getting our live radio broadcast underway in 60 seconds time after a quick weather update. 
Our guest this evening, Benny the Jet Yurkides, UFC fighter Willie Gates, Bellator fighter Randy Couture, and bodyguard to celebrities and consultant to police forces, military and prison system master Chuck Platten. Thanks for joining us. This is Martial Arts World Radio. From fatal opioid overdoses this year compared with 2016 when 2,458 people died. White House Press Secretary Sean Spicer says the administration is confident President Donald Trump's travel ban will be upheld by the Supreme Court. The Ninth Circuit Court threw another stumbling block in its way. The company behind ABC's Bachelor in Paradise has sent the show to purgatory for a while. Producers looking into allegations of misconduct in Mexico. From the Canadian Press, I'm Roger Ward. Here's Mark and Don Leslie from Leslie Motors. Hey Don, I think people like the small town atmosphere we have in our three dealerships. You're right, and I don't think they realize we have over 100 new and 75 pre-owned vehicles to choose from. And if we don't have what you're looking for, we will try our best to find it. You could call it big city inventory with a small town atmosphere. Hey, that's pretty good. Did you think of that all by yourself? Leslie Motors in Harrison, Walkerton, and Wingham. A pleasant drive for <laughs> For tonight, partly cloudy, chance of showers and thunderstorm continues. Wind from the west at 20 kilometers, becoming lighter this evening, a low of 17 degrees. For Tuesday, a mix of sun and cloud, wind becoming northeast at 20 kilometers, a high of 23 degrees, and the humid exit at 27. Cloudy periods overnight, a low of 14 degrees. For Wednesday, sunshine and a high of 24, clear overnight, a low of 14. For Thursday, more cloud, a chance of showers and a high of 21. Chance of showers overnight, the low of 16. And looking forward to Friday because that is what we do on a Monday. A mix of sun and cloud and a high of 23 degrees. St. Matthew's Hanover is having their sixth annual spare rib dinner. This takes place on Thursday, June the 15th from 5 to 7 p.m. There'll be barbecue and honey garlic ribs, along with potatoes, sauerkraut, veggies, salad, tea dessert, and coffee. And there is takeout available. Tickets are only $22 per person and available through Marie at 519-364-3614 or the church office. The views and opinions expressed in the following program are those of the participants and not necessarily those of Blue Water Radio. Martial Arts World Radio is brought to you by Bruce County Combat and Fitness in Walkerton. Check out the full list of classes at brucecountycombat.com. Welcome to Martial Arts World Radio. I'm your host, Joseph Clark. Each episode, we speak to the biggest names in martial arts and combat sports, from the UFC, Bellator, the Olympics, as well as martial arts legends, pioneers, and cinema stars. We discuss best practices, perspectives, and philosophies using martial arts as a metaphor for life's challenges. Over the next hour, we have the following four guest interviews. World champion kickboxing pioneer and action film star, Benny the Jet Yurkides, from an interview I recorded with him in Los Angeles while we grabbed some Chinese food around the corner from his dojo. UFC fighter Willie Gates talks to us about realizing his personal best and fight psychology, and bodyguard to the stars and consultant to military, prison guards, and police forces, Master Chuck Platten, and Bellator fighter Ryan Couture, son of UFC legend and action star Randy Couture, as Ryan prepares for Bellator 180. Welcome to our latest syndication affiliate, Radio Vibe. Martial Arts World Radio connects with audiences through distinctive and compelling guests and content across radio, online, and mobile platforms. If you would like to add your station to our network, or if you would like to advertise on the show and sponsor our celebrity fighter interviews, reach out to me at producer at mawradio.com. This week's inspirational quote is from Oscar Wilde and goes as follows. Be yourself. Everyone else is already taken. Irish playwright Oscar Wilde, 1854 to 1900. 
Our interview with UFC and Bellator fighter Willie Gates is brought to you by BobWallWorldBlackBelt.com, the world's foremost online martial arts and MMA marketplace. Prospect Fighting Championships, check them out at www.prospectfights.com. And the books The Tao of MMA and 21st Century Perspectives on Martial Arts. Both books are available at Amazon by searching The Tao of MMA and 21st Century Perspectives on Martial Arts. Willie Whoopass Gates, born January 21st, 1987, is an American mixed martial artist who has competed in the flyweight division of the UFC and Bellator. He is 5 foot 8 inches tall, weighing in at 125 pounds. Fighting out of Fontana, California, he has a record of 12 wins and 7 losses. Willie, thanks for joining us and welcome to Martial Arts World Radio. How are you doing? Uh, glad to be here, guys. So, Willie, beginning with the end in mind, at what age did you begin martial arts? I believe I first walked into a mixed martial arts just around the age of 24, 25. And what was it that drew you to the sport? Uh, actually, I had no idea about UFC, mixed martial arts, until uh, a, a buddy of mine was actually getting into Muay Thai. And then uh, he was asking me to come down to the gym one day, and I, I tried it out. I got good at it and just, I was hooked So what was it, Willie, that inspired or motivated you to compete? Um, just, just something that I never thought I would be interested in and then it just caught my attention and uh, I felt that I could, I could, yes, I could beat somebody in this and I could be good at this and I'm a competitive person as it is, so it was probably in my nature and my blood, so I just went on trying it out. Did you compete as an amateur? Uh, yeah, I had a, uh, well, back when I started, they didn't have amateur fights. They just had kind of smokers or just, hey, meet us at the gym at 3 o'clock and let's get it on. But uh, <laughs> uh, other than that, uh, I, did, I did about five of those. So uh, I believe all that five of those smokers or amateurs, whatever one you want to call it. So after that, I was about a year, did it, so I did my own and I figured out, hey, is there a particular area in mixed martial arts that you lean more towards, or is there a foundation martial art that you prefer? Yeah, I had no idea what mixed martial arts was, or I never got the karate, I didn't do any of that as a child, so and I guess what I was known for good at was really the stand up, so I could just stay with my things. And growing up, were you aware of the golden age of martial arts and were you a fan of martial art films? Jean-Claude Van Damme, Chuck Norris, Bruce Lee. Yeah, yeah, Bruce Lee, everybody knew Bruce Lee, but I, I, mean, I would never consider myself fighting or even picking up a martial arts at the time, but, you know, I guess it just found me. So, Willie, as you became a professional mixed martial artist, what would a day of training look like for you? Living, breathing, mixed martial arts in the gym 24 7 you know just trying to fail my craft really so it sounds like you were hooked uh yeah for the most part when i first started off and then you know i just went from there really i was always in the gym just looking just finding out artists and new fighters and champions and everybody did you have people who motivated you or who were inspirations role models growing up uh, not necessarily growing up, but like I said, I, it just makes martial arts, makes martial arts just slap in the face one day. You know, I didn't really know anything about it. You know, I, I, I actually wanted to be an actor, so it was two totally different worlds I was living in. And, you know, I just started pursuing mixed martial arts. But I, I can say I was a John Paul Van Damme uh, fan, though. Chuck Norris, you know, I was everybody at the low look at. And now, as a professional mixed martial artist, do you have people in your life who motivate or inspire you? Uh, I can just say my, my coaches and uh, teammates, you know, you always have somebody better or that you want to be or that inspires you to be better or push yourself. And so I would give that out to my coaches and my teammates at the start. So, Willie, would you walk us through and share with us the chain of events that led to you being called up by the UFC? Well, yeah, it was just kind of a, a snowball effect, really. Like, yeah, I just went from one second fighting on the local circuit to 
to take it, he's last minute fight, to, to take advantage of it and, and capitalize on it. Uh, you know, just one second, you know, just your average still, the next, you know, you're fighting on the biggest stage. So when the UFC reached out to your manager, Willie, what was going through your head? What emotion were you feeling when you found out that you were being called to fight in the UFC? I was nervous, happy, scared, just, you know, like, it was, it was a lot. I, it, was, it just came fast. It came too fast, actually. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't really expect it in time, you know, for me to get a call up to the UFC. So I just, I had to take it slow because I didn't, I didn't, I didn't think it would come. Willie, if I was in your shoes and I got that call, I would probably be asking myself, am I ready yet? Have I earned it? Do I deserve to be here? Did any of those questions go through your mind at the time? Um, no, most definitely. You know, it, it ran through my mind, like, you know, like, yeah, should be here, like, you know, are you ready for this? Like, you know, like, you know, just throw stuff out, you know, something that I wish I could never had at that first, but it was something that was just rambling on my mind, just because, but it's something that, like I said, I, one second I'm at the local circuit, like, knowing that, oh, well, you know, if I keep on doing this maybe two, three years, you know, I'll be ready for the UFC. And then I have to turn around and be like, no, you got, like, two months to get ready for this. Willie, I think for most of us to doubt ourselves is to be human. It's a very common thing. How did you work through that in order to prevail? Well, like, I kind of just, you have to push through it, you know. I'm, I'm, I'm strong-willed and, you know, I just have to push through it and keep on going because, you know, I'm a fighter. I'm a fighter at heart, you know. It's just that willpower that just can't be through it. Like, like I said, I, I even started off my career on two, you know. So me starting off like that, just already thinking, like, is this for me? Should I be fighting? Like, you know, you're not good enough. But, you know, turning that around to uh, a winning record and then winning a couple more fights. But now I'm at the top of I'm at the top of the heap, you know. So it, that was another motivation for mine because I didn't start off too good, and then I kept on going. I kept on pushing myself, and you know, um, I beat myself out. And now look at you know. Willie, it's only natural when you get some good news such as an opportunity like that to be called up to the UFC that you're going to want to tell your friends and family and share that good news. And of course, the price you pay for that is you are now in the spotlight and there's this expectation to perform and you no doubt, like any of us, want so badly to please them and to impress them and they're all watching you on fight day. So, of course, that's a very nervous situation. Tell us how you dealt with that and, and mentally how you approached those expectations that were on you. Well, the, the first fight is it's always a toss-up, you know, because you never really know, you know. I think the first fight should be the easiest because if you win it, then you win it. You know, especially mine, my case, it was last minute, so it was kind of like, hey, you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't, but hey, you better be damned if you did it, you know. So I just went out there, you know. You know, of course, I took my first fight, so I know I lost to John Ronda, so it was, it was like, ah, you know, he was number two in the world, you know, like, took him to, what, the third round, or second round, or third, third round, like, he did good, like, you know, so it's like, okay, you're giving some encouragement, but then, back on my mind, like, no, I'm going to win this fight. You know, I should have won, you know, but it was okay that I did lose, or, you know, because it was short notice, but, like, that's not really an excuse to that, but people like that. So, Willie, doing some soul-searching here, after that first fight, when the crowd had dispersed, when you were back in your hotel room and you reflected on the fight, were you able to say to yourself, I left it all in the octagon? Or, out of nervousness and just the new guy factor, did you hold back on that fight? Or did you give it your all? No. No. Um, I held back. Yeah, I never felt that, like, if you ever fall or competed, you know that, hey, I've done the best I could. I couldn't go anymore. I couldn't be any stronger. I couldn't be any faster. I couldn't be any better. Like, that's who I was at, at the peak. You can't be mad at each other because you couldn't go any further, you know. But me, I, I felt that I could have done more. I, I could have capitalized on certain situations that I did capitalize on. So you, you typically pinpoint those and, and you eat stuff like that because, you know, you kind of got better.
So what did you take away from that experience and what did you tell yourself to prepare yourself for that second fight? Just tell yourself that, you know, you deserve to be here and you're here for a reason, you know, go out there and prove yourself. And, you know, my next fight, I, I um, had to take the fight on, actually fight my teammate, you know, somebody that I, I started with from, you know, from almost day one of me stepping into the gym. So I had to necessarily pull those emotions aside and, and actually show the world, like, you know, I deserve to be here. And so I fought uh, there on the cube and I ended up winning, um, Winning that fight uh, via TKO, so it felt a little better. But it, it, like I said, it was it was like a bit of a sleep moment at the time because I had to take it, had to go in there and fight a friend, not a necessarily a teammate, not a trainer partner, like uh, a friend. And that, that was kind of tough for me to go in there and do that. But you know, at the end of the day, we got a job to do. Willie, would you share with us your perspective and your philosophy on pursuing personal excellence and becoming a champion? Pretty much, you gotta put you gotta put your heart into it. You know, you gotta put everything that you can, and you gotta push yourself. You gotta be better. You gotta you gotta be obsessed. You gotta be crazy. You know, you gotta be drivable. You just gotta be you gotta be your life. Like you know, especially if you want to be a champion at this level, like you have to. And that's why I felt that you know I messed up because I, I had so many other distractions in my life, and I was dealing with so much stuff and so so many other things I was turning away from what I need to focus on and it showed in my performance. Are there challenges now in life outside of the octagon that you're better equipped to take on as a result of your experience as a mixed martial artist? Uh, most definitely, you know, but like I said, you know, uh, I was dealing with it at the time and it, it affected me and my performance, so, you know, I just got to start back from a uh, square run and then show them that, you know, I really did deserve to be there. Maybe I wasn't really fully prepared to be there at the time, but hey, you know, I'm back and I'm ready. Willie, many of my guests, Jason Jackson, Don the Dragon Wilson, Bob Wall, they'll tell us that the challenges in the ring or the challenges in the octagon are easy compared to the challenges in life. You know, losing somebody, overcoming grief, uh, dealing with relationships, these are challenges that are very complex as, as compared to the challenges in the octagon. Would you agree with that? Well, yeah, definitely, because, you know, that's life. And, and you know, life is forever, and then whatever you're doing in the octagon, it's only 15 to 25 minutes, so it's temporary. So losing someone versus a fight, you know, you can't compare. But, you know, but there's still a challenge, and life is challenging, and it's something that you've got to overcome, and you have to overcome some situations in life, and you got to overcome some situations in a fight. So in a sense, it's all the same, you know. And Willie, as we bring our interview to a close, would you impart some words of wisdom for our listeners who are young martial artists or new to mixed martial arts and are hoping to become a professional or hopefully someday fight in Bellator or the UFC? Just give me all. If it's something that you really want to do and you want to pursue, like, just make sure you, you do it 100% so you have no doubt. This has been an interview with UFC and Bellator fighter, Willie Wobaskates. County Combat and Fitness in Walkerton offers recreational and competitive kickboxing and boxing classes for children and adults, as well as yoga classes. Your first class is always free to try. Bruce County Combat and Fitness offers single monthly memberships for as low as $45 and $67 for a family. Their drop-in fees are only $7 for most classes and just $5 for yoga and little warriors. Check out their full schedule at brucecountycombat.com. Find them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. They also sell a full range of fight gear and apparel. Here are Don and Lisa from Leslie Motors in Harrison, Walkerton, and Wales. Attention Ford F-150 owners. If you're in the market for a brand new F-150, then June is the month. In addition to 0% financing, big discounts, and a spring rebate, Ford is giving existing F-150 customers an additional $1,000 rebate. And Leslie Motors will throw in a no-charge, two-year, 40000 kilometer maintenance package. F-150 customers, June is the month to make a deal with Leslie Motors. Come in to Harrison, Walkerton, and Wales, and experience the Leslie Advantage. Tired of hard water wreaking havoc around your home? Dry skin and lifeless hair? Dull and dingy laundry? Soap scum and spotted glasses too?
Sunday, June 25th, UFC fighter Alex Ricci is hosting a Muay Thai seminar at Bruce County Combat in Walkerton, Ontario, Canada. Everyone is welcome, no experience necessary. It's from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m., $25 per person. Contact Bruce County Combat and Fitness for more information at 519-507-4431 or email them at brucecountycombat at gmail.com. Our interview with Master Chuck Platten is brought to you by Cayenne Independent Distributor, Daniel Girage. Cayenne is a leading provider of all-natural health and wellness products that provide athletes with faster post-training recovery and energy. Endorsed by professional fighters and celebrity martial artists Josh Tyler, Manny Pacquiao, and Jackie Chan, reach out to Daniel for more info at Cayenne Health Australia at gmail.com. Or Skype Daniel at that exact same address on Skype, Kayani, which is K-Y-A-N-I, Kayani Health Australia, at gmail.com. Grandmaster Chuck Platten has been a martial artist for over 40 years. He has black belts in Judo, Karate, Taekwondo, Jiu Jitsu, and Hapkido. He has combined these styles to create his own system. Grandmaster Platten went on to run his own celebrity security agency and has served as a security specialist and has provided bodyguarding services for the likes of Sophia Loren, Rod Stewart, Celine Dion, Rita Marley, and many more dignitaries over the past 30 years. He serves as a consultant providing training to the armed forces, police forces, and prison guards. Chuck, welcome to Martial Arts World Radio. Thank you, Joseph. Chuck, would you please share the various dance and degrees and black belts which you've earned over the years? Oh, God. <laughs> Uh, I started off in Soka in 59, Kido with Soka. Uh, established my foot then with uh, Sensei Yes. Um, I started in Jiu Jitsu in Judo with Yakutashita in the 60s. Then I went to, around 1967, I got into, at that time, so I went to Taekwondo. I got to Taekwondo with uh, Master Chunky Tang and John Park. And then I fell into Hapkido in 1968 and kind of become a love of my life. And uh, I basically stayed in Hapkido forever, you know, in the midst of that study. Then in the Philippines and some Punjab in Indonesia. Chinese temple in Canada. And I'm a grandmaster in Hapkido and created Chikido Kwan in basically 1978 and finally brought it to the public in 1998. Which is your own system that you still train people on today? Yes, which is, you know, basically the military police uh, use a force uh, 
combat art. And Chuck, would you also share with us some of the various stars whom you've provided security for through the years? Oh, so many of them. Um, I did the victory tour with Michael Jackson, the Jackson family. Uh, I did some of the I had a security work. Uh, actually, it was personally checked for security. I was hired by a separate company. Um, Paul Barry Ross, Robert Ruffer, Ryan O'Neill, uh, Stephen Durf, uh, Dennis Quaid, Sharon Stone. I can think of all of them. Quite a distinguished list. Goes <laughs> on. <laughs> when you provide security, it's, it's, it's a strange field. It, it, security is a strange field. This is true. When you provide security for these celebrities, are you basically introduced to them, you know, within a few minutes before you travel somewhere, or do you actually get a chance to establish some rapport with them? Um, most of it's pre ground laid um, because you, especially if it's a tour, that like with Rita Marty, and it was the one draw tour, right? So we had X amount of cities. Each city's different. You have to put a pre set up picking up uh, prior to switching from city to city. So, my job, because I was using the head of the security, is to go in there and pre set everything up beforehand. How did these dignitaries generally receive you? Are they engaging, or are you a, a bit of a ghost to them? Um, some of them are a ghost to, um, a lot of them was hands on. It depends on what the venue was. Um, if, it was if it was personal VIP, well, then you, you know, you're really close, you know, like with uh, Dennis Quaid and Rob De Niro and Chan Stone and uh, Stephen Dorfer. Um, I was the actual chauffeur by the great that thing with her, him and Robert De Niro and Dennis Quaid. That was a Disney film that up here in Canada. Um, with Rita Marty, I was actually one of two bodyguards, personal bodyguards, VIP. Okay. Um, yeah, so it varies. It depends on the venue itself. So would you describe for, for the uh, benefit of the listening audience, the, the type of vigilance or attention to detail that's involved in these instances where these people are under your care? Yeah, that varies. You know, it, it, it's, it's strange to be said. You know, we live in a violent world, and sometimes the violence is just beyond what most people understand mentally. You know, when you're a star for some reason, people do some really strange things when you're a public dignitary or a public figure. And it doesn't matter if it's political or entertainment or whatever. And some people um, are under constant threat, right? Or maybe a little paranoid because they've had threats or people that they're friends with had threats. And so it varies between each person on the type of security that they feel comfortable with. You know, a lot of times it'll be, you know, the film, the film industry itself, they'll want a certain amount of protection and stuff. And, that, and it's not always just because of the threat, sometimes it's just behavioral things making sure you know bad stuff doesn't get to the media, so keeping any incidents low profile. And then other times it's um, it's very casual. You're in the background, nobody even knows you're there. Chuck, let's change streams for a minute and talk about the training the, the training regimen that you've designed for armed forces personnel. What does that look like? Ooh, it's tough. <laughs> yeah, it's rough. Um, armed forces. Um, Training is a whole different game than the majority of most martial arts people get to see. With, with the forces, with any type of forces that you deal with anywhere in the world, right? This is the for force. The bottom line is you're the force and you're not allowed to lose. So it's your life online and your partners and your fellow people that you're with and the forces, their, their lives are on the line too. So in that sense, when you get down to that stage of the game, there's, it's nothing pretty, it's nothing fancy, but it's to the point, it's accurate, and it's complete. And if you've got a week's stomach, you're in your own business. How would your system compare to the Israeli Defense Forces Krav Maga? Um, they're very, very similar, as a matter of fact. They're um, very, actually very little difference, right? I think. In general, most of the combat force stuff is taught worldwide. They kind of take it from everybody, you know, they take it from Sistema, and some of them take it from, you know, Grab and Growl, some of them from Hat Kilo. I mean, if you see them, if you see them in the Korean, Korean Army, uh, Special Forces to protect the President, you see it, it's, 
the, the districts will say, Tech Farm will have Kilo, and then the weapons strike will absolutely be insane. You know, it's just, it's over the top protective. And once again, being the forces, the bottom line is they're not supposed to lose. That's why they're the armed forces. <clears throat> So Chuck, how does your law enforcement training or differ, uh, sorry, your law enforcement training differ from the military? Obviously it's restrictive, it's non-lethal, but how would it differ? Well, the police forces all have the same general idea and the general, and the general restrictions. It's what is now acceptable by the public is use of force, right? So unlike in the military where you would just push it by you know, you're passing by a set of them with a gun because you have no choice, right? The, these people are not all lethal criminals. Some of them are just drunk and disorderly and uh, maybe just obnoxious or maybe just, you know, maybe just something that's mentally ill or mentally challenged. Sure. Right? So you can't use that type of force. So a lot of that type of, the use of force with police forces is what they call one is now camera friendly because they're both on cut with the cameras. So you can't go back to people and strangling people and, you know, shoot them in the head, beat them if you can, that's just not acceptable by the public. And I agree. Um, so a lot of it is restraint. A lot of it is locks and holds. Um, a lot of it is like, you know, plain tap or tape down that you see in UFC. You know, and, um, the idea is the police don't go out and beat people up because it's fun. They, they have to restrain them and, and take them into custody because that's the law. That doesn't mean right, that they're going to beat you to death by right, to put you in handcuffs. And that's not always easy. So it's, you know, it's a lot of choices between each officer. And when you teach them, the idea is to teach them how to get the job done as fast as they can without the least amount of energy and the least amount of damage. Okay. That's acceptable. Okay. Chuck. Do you provide the same training for prison guards as you would for the police, or would that differ as well? Um, yeah, basically it's, just, it's the same. Um, police, police will have more of a chance, more of an opportunity to be involved in confrontations than you would be. Uh, the police are involved in confrontations because, I mean, there's guns on the street. There's not guns in the army and, and corrections. Uh, the, the, the penal system. So... The, the biggest part of the trick you would have in a pill system would be somebody with a shank or someone with a knife. Okay. Right? And you know, so you're not really, you know, it's an arm, in an arm's way as you, as you would be as a law enforcement officer. Law enforcement officers have a tough job. Because, you, you know, it's just unpredictable. You don't know what you're, you know, you're walking into a domestic and the guy's got a shotgun. You know, I just, you don't know what's coming until you get there. So the difference between the two is one is more of a ready. Use of force where you know, hey, fall out, fell, like, no, I have to put my gun and shoot the guy. And the other is, well, there's enough of us to jump on to do it. So that's basically, with one, it's a lot of people, like, especially if you go, like, you know, here in Ontario, which, you know, this is one of many corrections worldwide, and they call it the ISIS team, it's the team that uh, takes violent um, uh, guys misbehaving in in the jail cells and stuff like that, and to extract them out of, the, out of a jail cell, mm -hmm. right? Technically, it's just a big rush of people and take to the ground, get them custody, can't get them for anybody else. And then remove them from the cell. Okay. And once again, it's the same idea, right? Try to do it without hurting as best you can. Do you generally find that the police you train have already trained in other styles? Mm -hmm. You have been listening to my interview with Grandmaster Chuck Platt. From the Dan Reflections, let us show you the wonderful, colorful new spring lines. La Dan Reflections has entered its second year with the support of all our customers. Whether it's casual Friday or a semi-formal occasion, we can outfit you. We have a wonderful selection of accessories. Come in to see Lisa or I at La Dan Reflections, 119 Garrett Fraction Street, South in Durham. This area's fashion destination will make you look great so you feel fabulous. Join us in Hanover this summer. We've got an experience for you. Enjoy live music, harness racing and theater, play the clock, or family recreational activities. Tour our vibrant downtown featuring great shopping and events. 
Taste our locally brewed, handcrafted beer and the many dining options. This is just a snapshot of what awaits you. See Cuneo's Carpet One Floor and Home for all your ceramic tile projects. Discover more at Hanover.ca. Martial Arts World Radio is brought to you by Bruce County Combat and Fitness in Walkerton. Check out the full list of classes at brucecountycombat.com. BWR Blue, White, Red. That's our colors. Check us out online at bluewaterradio.ca. Martial Arts World Radio is brought to you by Bruce County Combat and Fitness in Walkerton. Check out the full list of classes at brucecountycombat.com. Our interview with Bellator fighter Ryan Couture is brought to you by our web marketing affiliates, Everlast, Century Martial Arts, MMA Warehouse, and UFC Store. Check them out at our website at www.mawradio.com. Ryan Couture is an American professional mixed martial artist fighting for Bellator. He is the son of UFC Hall of Famer Randy Couture. Ryan is 34 years of age, normally fights in the lightweight division at 155 pounds, and his styles are wrestling and boxing. He fights out of Las Vegas, Nevada. I spoke to Ryan on the phone as he prepared for his fight against Haim Ghazali at Bellator 180 in New York City. Good afternoon and welcome to Good, you're Bell. Hi, hey, how are you? Doing great, thanks. Thank you so much for joining us. It must be an exciting couple of weeks for you. Oh, absolutely. I'm fired up. And as you get ready for this fight, I mean, there must be a lot of things on your mind, but would you share and you know, reveal those to us? What has been on a little bit of what's going through your mind as you're preparing for this, as opposed to other fights or other endeavors? Uh, you know, obviously it's a, it's a huge event, and I'm just thrilled to be a part of it. Um, as, as for the fight itself, it, it's there's some interesting challenges because it's my first time up at 170, so trying to get my body used to moving that extra weight around and training with bigger guys than I'm used to. Uh, getting in shape for that has, has been a lot of work. And, and then, uh, you know, uh, my plan is, is such a, a specialist on the ground that, that trying to be sharp and be prepared to, to do the right things there and, and uh, you know, fighting the way I need to fight him has, has been a fun challenge as well. So. I feel like I'm, I'm at that point in training camp where, where everything's starting to come together and I'm feeling sharp and, and feeling dialed in. So, so uh, this is an exciting, uh, exciting couple of weeks coming up. Definitely an exciting couple of weeks. When you're preparing for these fights at this point in time, would you say that you're focusing more on strategy, and more on technique, uh, diversity of technique? Where would you position that? Uh, at this point in the training cycle, it's it's kind of focusing in on the techniques that are working and that are and that are are coming together for me and throwing away the excess. Like uh, at the beginning of camp, we have a lot of ideas of things that we think might work, and and then uh, I start playing around with them and seeing which ones I'm able to incorporate into my game well and and uh, and able to pull off without having to think too much and 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 really able to execute. And and now we kind of have that list narrowed down and and uh, this last hard week of training is just about coming in focused and showing up and, and take care of business and, and uh, just, you know, not not thinking too much, just getting in there and, and performing and, and banging out those last few rounds of sparring that we need and, and rolling into fight week ready to go. <laughs> Would you consider yourself more of a strategic fighter or do you find that you react more to the situations that they arise in the stage itself? Uh, I think a little bit of both kind of depends on, on how the fight's going obviously when everything's coming off according to plan it's a little easier to be strategic but but uh we all know anybody who's thought knows that it's it's not always like that and a lot of times you do just kind of have to react to what's happening in there and, and be able to adjust on the fly and, and i think that's uh that's what makes the difference between guys who are successful and guys who fall short is is who's able to adjust and and uh and deal with those surprises that are inevitably going to come at you. As you're going through your preparation, I mean, there's no surprises come at everybody, right? And, and I know I've spoken to some fighters, both in Bellator and the UFC, that'll say by the night that they step into the cage and they face their opponent, they've already fought that fight in their head or in their imagination a thousand different ways, a thousand different times. So 
do you find that you tend to get psychologically prepared for these fights, or do you tend to try to zen out and just focus more on the technique? Uh, no, I think you have to you have to have those those uh, mental battles and, and uh, you know fight that fight in your head over and over to to really get the reps in. You can't you can't put in the, the number of repetitions physically that you need to to really to really master the game plan and really be prepared without breaking your body down too much. So I think that, you know, having those uh, those visualization sessions and, and really running through different scenarios in your head over and over is a, is a huge component to, to being fully prepared. Would you tell me a little bit about your preparation in terms of your training partners and, and those, those who are motivating you and who are influencing you? Uh, we've got a, an awesome team here and everybody's really, uh, really stepped up to, to give me the work I need is uh, the, the this fight, this this opponent is a little different style than most of the guys at the gym have. So, you know, getting guys to, to be willing to pull guard and to, and to push for submissions when they normally uh, in their training would never do that has, has been kind of kind of key and, and uh, I've had a lot of guys step up and really give me a good look and, and really help me out a lot. So um, it's it's been fantastic. I'm lucky to have such a great team around me. When you're looking at the potential opponents or when you're facing your opponent, do you tend to have a preference in terms of facing an opponent who's a striker versus someone who's strong in a ground game or to have a very well-rounded opponent, or does that thought even enter your mind? Uh, no, I mean, obviously I'd always like to fight someone where I have a clear advantage or a, a, a well-defined path to victory, but but we don't really get to have that much of a say in it most of the time. So, so uh, the a big part of the fun, a big part of the challenge of this sport is is looking at that problem that we're posed with when we when we're getting an opponent and trying to trying to come up with that that recipe for success and figure out the right way to approach it in order to to up our odds of, of winning. So, you know, I, I think that that's a big part of the appeal to me, and a big part of why I keep coming back is is that challenge and that problem solving aspect of it. As you start approaching this fight, I mean, Bellator is an incredibly exciting organization, and it's just, you know, it's, it's obviously grown in leaps and bounds, excellent coverage on Spike. How do you feel about the fact that you're now laying down your career and your legacy in Bellator? Oh, I couldn't be happier about it. Um, when I uh, first found my way to Bellator a couple of years ago, it, it really did sort of feel like I was home finally. It just, just felt so comfortable, obviously. Uh, Having worked with uh, with Scott and, and everybody back in the strike force days gave me that little bit of familiarity coming into it. But there's also a great a great crew of people who've been with Bellator even since before that sort of shift in the management that, that are all wonderful people to work with. But uh, it, it's it just feels like uh, feels like family, feels like coming home every time I get to get get there to check in on fight week, and, and uh, I couldn't be happier. Uh, kind of feel like I'm coming into that that last phase of my career, I couldn't be happier with where I've ended up, and I look forward to, to finishing out the rest of my fights with Bellator. Do the fights get routine, or is each one different, and is this one different? Uh, yeah, there are elements of the training cycle that get a little bit, you know, monotonous and, and sort of same old, same old, but, but each opponent is different and presents a different set of challenges and a different... Uh, Set of skills I have to focus on, so so that keeps things interesting. You know, you have you have a a, a new puzzle to solve every time out, and, and uh, you know it's it's still a slog getting through eight weeks of, of hard training. Your body's telling you it doesn't want to do anymore, and, and uh, you're showing up to those two workouts a day and, and having to, to give it your all, and, and that gets to be a bit of a, a grind and a bit of a feel like a bit of a hamster spinning a wheel, but but uh, having just a different, a different puzzle to solve, a different end result every time is, is what keeps it interesting and, and uh, kind of offsets that to you. And in terms of future goals, after you finish this fight, do you have some longer term plans that you're able to share with us at this point? <clears throat> uh, I'm just, you know, looking forward to being a part of this huge event and, and uh, you know, get, getting back on the winning track. I had a rough year last year, so so I need to get over that hump, get, get back in the win column, and, and then I'll be looking to head back to my weight class and, and uh, start climbing my way back up the ranks. Now, our final question here, and again, appreciate your candor, and thanks for joining us. A word of advice for those who are now setting their sights on, let's say, 
transitioning from an amateur to professional. Are there some words of wisdom that you might share with us today? Uh, no, I think the, the the biggest thing, especially for the amateur guys, uh, whenever we have kids here at our gym, you know, kind of making sure that they're they're learning something every time out and. and Win or lose doesn't matter. Your record as an amateur means nothing because no matter what, when you turn pro, you're starting O and L. So not to focus so much on the win loss record as an amateur, but just to focus on the process of learning. You know whether it's you pick up some new tips on how to cut weight better and, and feel better on flight night because of that, or or just getting used to those nerves and managing managing that that uh, that nervous energy going into the fight and. and performing on fight night at the level you know you can in the gym because you're getting more comfortable out there. Uh, I think focusing on those things more than on the, on the win-loss record at, at the amateur ranks is a, is a huge thing that I, that I always try to impart to, to our young up-and-comers here. Sounds like great advice, sound advice, and want to thank you once again for your time today. It's been a real privilege and we wish you much This has been a telephone conversation with Bellator fighter Ryan Couture. Our interview with world kickboxing legend and martial arts film star Benny the Jet Yurkidas is brought to you by ketone specialist Regan Bremersch. Keto OS is leading a modern health revolution through therapeutic ketone technology. Mix this great natural 100% bioidentical ketone powder into a 16 ounce bottle of cold water for a great tasting drink for peak performance. Within 15 to 30 minutes, you'll be in the optimal training and fight state of ketosis. He doesn't just say it can do it, he can prove it. For more information, contact Regan at 1204-522-0733 or text him at 1204-522-0733 or visit www.proveittoday.ca. That's www.pruvit number two, D-A-Y dot C-A. Benny the Jet Yurkidas, born June 20th, 1952, is both a pioneer and a legend in American kickboxing. His professional record was 49 wins, one loss. He fought and held world titles in multiple divisions. He holds black belts in eight different styles. And as a martial arts film star and fight choreographer, he has appeared in over 30 productions and has also been a fight trainer to the biggest action names in Hollywood. Thank you much for allowing me the opportunity to interview you once again. Thank you much, Joe. Internal martial arts. We discussed this in a previous interview. Would you elaborate on this further? Internal martial arts is about the inner soul. You know, we take a journey and we're learning externally physical movement and in that trying to understand a physical movement a block a strike uh, a direction but truly what's all, all about internal martial art is about understanding the why the direction okay? it gives you the mental edge of understanding why you're doing what you're doing and so i think internal martial arts what it does it brings up emotions to stop us from our better self or it brings up emotions that help us get through certain things. That's internal martial arts. So would you say a full contact fight, for example, or even a street fight, would uncover emotions that we've never experienced in other aspects of our life? When you're talking about full contact, you're talking about a threat. And when you talk about a threat, and you feel threat, whether it be emotional threat, physical threat, spiritual threat, character threat, all brings up things that we hide very well because there's a certain program that's been taught to us to hide very well because showing the emotions of fear, anger, frustration, anxieties, it brings up to where people usually like to take advantage of it. And as they take advantage of it, uh, it actually doesn't come out in a good way. Can you please share with us your philosophy on the ring as the square jungle. The square jungle is about a metaphor of your home, your work, the place you train, peers, people around you. And that square jungle means the energy that comes into that space. And sometimes when energy comes in that's not welcome, what happens is 
kind of brings up things and triggers things that are in us that we hide very well. In the square jungle, what it does, it brings a threat because the square jungle, you have no place to run. It's you and your opponent. Okay, that's there. So there's almost a trapness, and you feel trapped because you can't run from it. So you have to answer to this energy. Whether it be good energy, negative energy, fun energy, whatever, you're going to have to answer to it. And when you answer to it, whether it be verbal, whether it be mental, whether it be physical, and you still have to answer to it. And sometimes it's not as pleasant as most people make it out to be. And so in that, bringing out that kind of energy, that sometimes that we hide because when we feel threatened, everything under your bed, everything out of your closet, everything that you, it, it comes forward because only when you're threatened, these emotions, you cannot help. It shows up. And it's sometimes what we fear is about how it looks, how it sounds. And this is what we fear. Most people hide that emotion because if it brings up what we've been hiding, uh, uh, fear, then it, it sometimes it shows up in crying, sometimes it shows up in yelling, sometimes it shows up in freaking out, sometimes it shows up in a way that sometimes we get embarrassed by what it looks like or sometimes we get embarrassed by what we say and we're always and we always are sorry for it especially if we don't like it we're sorry for what we said and we pay for it later on now you've been in street fights several street fights as you shared in the book the jet are there different emotions that you feel in a street fight as opposed to a fight in the ring so you're talking about street fight or talking about a fight in a ring. The difference is the fight in the ring, there's rules. You go by rules. Hey, you can't grab, you can't go to the throat, you can't uh, kick to the knees, you okay, so forth. So there's rules in the square jungle, which is the ring. In the street, there is no rules. It's about survival. So the different emotions come out is the first thing that usually comes out is anger. Okay? Because anger is very easy to show up. It shows up faster than fear. So when that anger comes up and you start striking and you start defending and you start doing whatever out of anger, what follows behind that anger because if you hit somebody and so forth and it doesn't do anything to that person, fear follows behind it like, uh oh, He's going to hit me hard, harder, or I'm going to pay for that. And so there's a fear base of, am I going to be able to handle what he gives back to me? So it's easy to actually give out. As they say, it's easy to dish it out, but to, to get the return from it, not many people can handle the return. So in the street, uh, it, the reason why the emotions come up faster is because there is no rules and nobody is there to stop it. That's why uh, there's a danger in the street. And even though in the ring there's a danger of being knocked out or being unconscious or having some type of, um, you know, injury to the head, you know, it's not as fearful because there's always, the rules make it more safer than the streets. Now, Benny, in Bruce Lee's book, The Tao of Jeet Kune Do, he wrote about fear and rage and the adrenaline rush. And in his writings, he was saying rather than resist it or be fearful of it or refrain from it, to embrace it, to engage it and use it as a way to fuel your performance in a fight. How do you feel about that? I feel what Bruce Lee was talking about is to use that kind of emotions to actually benefit from it. But for myself, I know from fighting in a ring and going to third world countries and fighting where there's no rules, I recognize if you use anger fighting, you become blind. All you see is an object and you're going after it out of anger. And you become a checker player, that means you Give them one hit and you'll take three, four, and five, and it doesn't matter to you because you're angry 
then you're going to stop that person in front of you or the targets in front of you. You want to stop it. So you're not really looking. If it's fearful, and if you, you have a lot of anger, I mean, a lot of fear while you're in the ring, and somebody hits you, it's like having a cold shower. And it's like getting a cold shower and just this shot goes to your body and it actually stops you from moving forward into protection. And all you're doing is trying to protect yourself by hiding, running, or getting out of the way. So the fear, and sometimes they say, well, the fear sometimes, the fear, instead of running away, I run at the person. And a lot of people that, uh, that actually use fear to move them forward, they're actually not hitting target, they're just striking at a person. And they're not hitting target, they're just going and trying to stop that person out of fear. And if it comes to a third stage, which is frustration, is when you start talking to yourself and beating yourself up mentally. And you start telling yourself, what's wrong with me? Come on, I'm looking bad, I'm better than that. I could. And you start seeing all these, in other words, a lot of other voices start coming in your head. And all these other voices start putting doubt in you. And then you start getting frustrated. And, and you start getting angry at that frustration. But if you go to the stage four, which is anxiety, it means I'm stuck. I can't move. I need somebody to help me get out of it. Either give me something or go to a doctor to give me something to, to slow me down. Or usually somebody, your corner man that you trust will help you and, and calm you down to get you out of that anxiety. Many in your book, The Jet, you shared that when you were younger, you got in some trouble with the law. And it sounded from your description in the book like you had what we refer to as an aha moment. You came to some realizations. In fact, a couple times in your book, you mentioned areas where you, in your life and in your journey, where you came to some realizations about things that troubled you about your behavior at that time. Uh, you were aware of them, but then you still indulged in that behavior a little longer. So at some point in your life, was there a monumental 